Choppers. How are you guys doing today? Thank you for joining me for another official edition of You're in the Cut with Chop It Up. I said you're in the cut with Chop It Up. You're in the cut with Chop It Up. Hey, my choppers. And if you're new past my page, I'm Pumpkin. Glad you are here. Today, we're just going to get right into it, y'all. We're going to go over, you know, the recap, season 12, episode 8, okay? Head Over Heels. It was aired December 22nd, 2019. Okay. So, I'm going to just start off with Candy and Todd real quick, okay? <sighs> Them and all their businesses that they got going on, okay? Okay. Did y'all see how Candy was acting a little bit funny and giving Todd the side eye when he took her to the restaurant, the Mexican restaurant, Ole G? <laughs> like, oh, lady gang, Ole G, whatever. Anyway, it's the Mexican restaurant that he started. And it's been sitting there for over a year, Candy stage. I mean, it has broken windows and everything. Todd hasn't even invested his time into getting that together in a year. Not nothing. And I know, you know, they, they paying um, for the building space every month. And I guess Candy getting a little sick of it. Anyway, she was a little, um, a little pissed. They were starting to talk in there, and she was like, you know, Todd, you know, you're you're biting off a lot, and basically more than I want to chew, you know. We have the old lady gang, that's costing us this amount. You have the old lady breakfast game that you opened up right next door, that's costing us the, a certain amount. The old lady and now, and he got the track the trailer. He bought a freaking track the trailer. Okay, guys. So, you know, he said, uh, you hating. How is she hating when she trying to, you know, watch out for her money? Like she said, um, she has outlasted a recession. So she does know about, you know, holding on to her money. And obviously she'd be watching the financial you know, channel, okay, with the um, the Dow and the Stock and Jones and all of that. So she watching her money. She's not playing. She's a true business woman. And Todd, I know he didn't come from money. First of all, if you're not spoiling Kayla or your children, y'all, with your finances, then you don't have the money, period. You know, you live in check by check. Because any parent is going to want to spoil their child and give them what they need. And the fact of the matter is that he does not like Candy to give her stuff. I don't know. That's hateration to me. Because guess what? If I had a balled out husband like Candy, as far as, you know, him, her being his wife, my kids would have everything. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Trust and believe. Honey, she would have the $100,000 Rolls Royce convertible, just like Riley. Different color, baby. Trust and believe it. <laughs> but anyway, he always did have the complex about, you know, basically about not having money and Candy having money. Y'all do realize that uh, Todd was part of the production team. He probably was the water boy, okay? The grip, the key grip, or, you know, something like that. And then that's how she really met him. She wanted to portray a whole different scenario on the show so he can get on the show. That's how Candy is able to really be on the show to this day. Had she not started dating Todd, she would not have a storyline at all so for her to continue on the show she started dating Todd which was behind the scene a water boy brought him on you know production allowed him to be on the show and that became her storyline Mama Joyce versus Todd boom yes you heard it here at first that chop it up 
okay but candy starting to wisen up y'all about the money even Riley then went to Instagram this last past week and she was talking major crap y'all yes she was yes she was okay um the live is down now but um she was talking boo boo crap about her mama and Todd really not her mama but anyway um so Candy, I guess she's getting a little sick of it and she's like, yo, um, I'm not finna just keep throwing my money out there like that. And basically all she wanted was a date. I guess that's how he looked at it. She just wanted to go out and she just wanted to date. So now she's tripping on him about the businesses. He need to take that woman on a date. You worried about this, that, and the other. Y'all know y'all got people in places at y'all restaurants and stuff to run it. That y'all can have a date night, okay? And with the new baby, child, I'm done talking about y'all. Y'all getting on my last nerve. Anyway, we're going to go on to Cynthia's big engagement. Yes! Mike finally got on that old dusty, dirty, low down. Oh, man. Nian popped the question. He was at the jewelry store picking out all these rings. He found the one he liked. He proposed to her, y'all, at her wine cellar opening. It was so cute. I was, I really loved it. I loved the little mirror picture that the family made for the two of their engagement with the children's name on it. And y'all know it had to be a little bit of drama at the wine cellar opening, honey, after the, you know, before the engagement, Marla brought in the drama. Okay. First of all, before we get into Marlo bringing the note in from Nene to Cynthia. Just check out her outfit, y'all. That is the worst outfit. She didn't know if she wanted to go to the club or she was going to get married. You know, like, you know, the reception. She looked like she had on a reception tee. And her boobs, y'all, they looked like um they was hitting her knees. I ain't like it. Y'all like it? And then white? You get married or that lace on the top? Ugh. Anyway, Marlo, I like you, girl. Trust and believe. And I, I do believe you got some good fashion. Believe it. But that outfit, it wasn't doing that for me. It was hurting my eyes. I had, I was almost about to fast forward it. <laughs> Stop me right in my track because that outfit was a fast forward moment. Anyway, y'all. So, like I was saying, Marlo comes in, hands Cynthia the note from Nene, and guess what, y'all, it said, it was like, um, congratulations on your new business, I'm sure it will be a success, this is Nene Leakes talking, y'all, Cynthia, Never in my wildest dreams would I think we would be in the place. I've always been a supporter towards you, and today won't be any different. I'm proud of you. After I hope you always have the courage to run after your dreams. Nene, stop. Stop. Okay? You know you don't wish that girl no success and no love, honey. And plus, she all right. She got her cargo. She got her barely modeling agency. She got both the wine cellar thingies, honey. She doing all right. Huh? But Portia, she wasn't having it. She looked up, gave her the side out, walked away. She wasn't hearing that. She ain't got no time for Nene. Ever since Nene did so on the reunion. Yes, honey. And was talking about she wasn't nobody friend. And she was calling her big sis. And... You know, she really thought that they were forming some type of relationship, and that really did hurt um, Portia. So Portia wasn't hearing that, and when Kenya came in, Kenya wasn't hearing it either. Speaking of Portia, child, that half behind, what, therapy session with Dr. Sherry, they know they lying, y'all. They is lying. You heard it here first. They lying. Portia and Dennis, they came there together, y'all. Okay, Dennis just went in the bathroom, honey. Used the bathroom and let Portia talk for five or ten good minutes. And then he walked in like um, they didn't just leave her house together. 
Okay, they are together now, y'all. They stay in the same house. And then on the show, he got the nerve to ring the bell to his own damn house. He know he got a key in his pocket. Poor shot. Stop trying to play us and come true, come true. Like a Portia and Dennis right now anyway. So they trying to bamboozle us. Are y'all bamboozled? How y'all feel about being bamboozled? <laughs> anyway, y'all, um, tell me what y'all think about Portia and Dennis. And once again, congratulations, uh, Cynthia and Mike. What y'all think about that note? Because to me, it was underhanded shady, under, honey, under the tree shade, honey, for Nene to send a note and bring those crusty behind um, snacks that they propped up on boxes, okay, and Lennon, honey. I ain't like it. I ain't like it at all. But anyway, um, might have been something I would have done. <laughs> Anyway, don't forget to subscribe to your girl. Once again, thank you for joining me at In The Cut with Chop It Up. I said you're in the cut with Chop It Up. You're in the cut with Chop It Up. I see y'all around for something. Bye, baby.